Michael Winslow. If you Google me right now, that's what you're going to find. That's the guy that makes all the noise at the police academy. I am not him. So you probably want to contact me on Twitter, here, or here. Also, I work for Trinity Mobile, and I prefer spaces over tabs. So, <laughs> one of the big things about DevOps that I've learned is that it's a very nebulous concept. That everybody has a different idea of what it is. And a lot of times, I go back to my work colleagues and other people, and I say things like this. You keep using it, but you don't know what it means. I, in the hallways, I say, hey, when you take your car and put it together with your pet, you don't end up with a carpet. So why, when you put dev together with up, you think that that's what it is? It's more about the culture. But apparently, I'm more like a Jedi Knight when, when I say this, and nobody really believes that I can do what I do. So my recommendation to all of you, this is what I did. You find something really small to automate, then you measure it, code it, and deliver it. All these things are very important uh, in order to be able to convince somebody the power of DevOps, no matter what tool you're using. So how do you find something to automate? You basically hide around corners. You go to meetings. You find out where people are doing things in a very slow, highly repeatable fashion. And you don't tell them that you're going to automate it. You just take a look at them. The next thing you do is you take that and you... <laughs> and uh, what we identified as something that we could automate were our software release notes. So every sprint, we have to uh, give software release notes to our CAD board, our change acceptance board. And it was a very highly repeatable process. So first we had to measure it, okay? So it took our Scrum Master two hours to put together the page and a couple of other things in JIRA. It took our deployment uh, experts three hours to be able to bring together the different versions. And it took our Veracodes, uh, took our developers about six hours to do all the scanning, okay? So these were all things that we felt could possibly be uh, you know, automated. So we sat down and we coded it. And how did we code it? We had to find out what, how we could code all these very manual processes. And when we go back to this, we found out, okay, we could replace the Scrum Master's work with APIs in JIRA. We could re replace the deployment work with information that we could get out of GitHub. And we can replace the uh, Veracode scanning uh, with an API that was available by Veracode. And so basically we took an 11 hour process and brought it down to zero hours, uh, less than a minute. And basically the key thing then to do is to deliver it. Okay, you don't want to hold this close to your chest and have it on your local environment and make people come to you for it. You want to put it behind a button and let them self-serve. Okay, so we did that, and it was awesome, and now it's fast, but what does that say? I mean, have we improved quality in the, at the same time? Well, let's find out. Let's take a look at some of the numbers. Sorry, not the numbers yet. We'll get to the numbers. So we found out that we improved quality in this way. Our Scrum Master had a way to improve his process. It was called copy and paste. Right? And so basically he would take one release note, copy and paste it, and then you realize you're, it's telling you that you're basically delivering the, the identical product that you did in the previous release, but that's not really what happened. Worst part is that uh, the change control board allowed that through. Okay, so here's what our notes look like. If we take a look at the very top part of our notes, what we're going to see is the release overview. This is gotten directly from JIRA and brought in and put into a bulleted point and with a link back to the original release notes page in JIRA so that everybody can clearly see, yes, what they're telling us they're delivering is actually what they're showing in JIRA. The second section, and the most hard to, to code, was our section for projects. And these were all of our microservices that got pulled from the same manifest file that was used to deliver the software itself. So there was no middleman, there was no manipulating this data. And so out of that data, we were able to put links back to our uh, automated testing uh, results, our actual Jenkins page that can uh, do the uh, deployment, and our results of our uh, Veracode scans, all right here. The third part of our release notes was our simulated MOP, the method of procedure. Before this, it was a spreadsheet. Now it's just a boilerplate piece of our, of our code that has checkboxes of all the things you have to do during the release. What are the results? Well, since uh, at 10.5, we had saved over 900 bad hours if you use the calculations that we measured earlier. But more importantly, the release management team trusts the validity, validity of the release notes. The security team believes in the security scans. And uh, there's two other bullets that I get to the time. And now instead of what you saw before, you see your wonderful colleague, we just scored big for DevSecOps. And I believe this is the last one. Oh, and by the way, please. Oh, that's me. There's Michael Winslow again. Both of us. Uh, everybody in the audience, please get around to getting up here and doing one of these for yourself. Thanks, guys.